camp, and uh, this is German saying that labor brings freedom, which is one of the most famous lies of a Nazi Germany. One of the military leader of Nazi Germany, Frederick said that uh, nobody can escape from this place. The only way to get out of this place is through the chimney of the furnace. And we're now entering into the camp. And you can see that uh, the wall are built of red bricks. This is uh, camp number one, which was used for administration and used to be offices for the enterprises that serve the Nazi Germany. You might also see some uh, houses made of wood. Most of them are located in Camp 2, where most of the Jewish people lived. When the German military uh, troops uh, recede, all, all of those camps are being destroyed. This is actually a replica, a restoration from the year 2009. A Swedish people, a Swedish person stole that, that sign. And later, the sign was, uh, uh, a replica was made. We want to remind you that uh, this concentration camp is named by UNESCO as a cultural heritage. So everything here is belong, uh, belong to the Poland National Museum. It's illegal to take anything from here. This is the routine uh, tour. Uh, routine for this concentration camp. This is uh, building number four, which is an exhibition room listing some of the evidence of the atrocity of Nazi Germany. This map shows the origins of the Jewish people that was held prisoner here in Auschwitz. Some of them are from Latvia, from Spain, and uh, they were sent here on train. Sometimes the journey may take from two days to nine days, respectively. This picture shows you some of the statistics about the concentration camp of Auschwitz. So altogether, 1.3 million people were sent here, among which 1.1 million were killed or dead inside this camp which is more than the casualty, the soldier casualty of uh, the World War II of uh, uh, United States and UK combined. This is a picture showing some women and children marching to the gas room. Sometime uh, at the Nazi Germany fold, the Jewish people saying that uh, they will be relocated, but actually they are sent to death. This is exhibition room number two. There are a lot of pictures.
This is camp two. The Birknall concentration camp. You can see a lot of Jewish people came here with their luggage and their family without any knowing that they will be sentenced to death. You can also see some German soldiers in these pictures. These pictures demonstrate how the Jewish people were sent to Auschwitz um, from all places, all countries of Europe. <laughs> this is the typical Jewish outfit. This is exhibition room three called the, the Road of Death. This picture shows the arrival of the Jewish people. Mainly in this picture are women and children. After getting off the train, the women and children were sent directly to the gas room where those with labor ability were sent to labor force to do a lot of hard work. This is the uh, selection and separation of people according to their gender and age. This is a clearer demonstration of the separation. You can see the male are on the right and the women children on the left. That's what uh, the Birknall concentration camp used to look like. You can see their expressions when this picture was taken. This boy here was very clear hatred in his eyes. And this kid here looks like he is only two years old. The depiction of this photo reads, The Road to Death. They are on a walk, they are on the road to the gas room. Without any rebellion or fear, because the Nazi Germany told them that uh, this is only part of their relocation, and this, uh, they are only taking them to take a bath. So they have no idea that this is uh, literally the march to death. On this map, you can see the location of the three concentration camps. And we are at Camp 1, the Auschwitz camp, and that's Birkenau, Camp 2, and Monowitz, Camp 3, is a chemical company of Nazi Germany. Because uh, tomorrow will be the Remembrance Day, there are a lot of tourists and also many of them come from China. Let's go to level two.
on level two, you can see some uh, evidence, some uh, more material things and evidence. These cans used to be the container of the poisonous gas. There are yellow crystals. You only need eight to nine can to kill around 2,000 people. It only takes you about 15 minutes to kill 2,000 people. And most of the prisoners died due to suffocation. They used to use carbon dioxide, but it, the price is too high. And in some other camps, they use uh, the tail gas of cars. But uh, it takes too long to kill people and prisoners. And it's quite unstable. So after repetitive experiment, this kind of gas can was chosen to be uh, to be the uh, the tool of killing because it's uh, very uh, its price is very low but highly efficient the room we are about to enter might cause some discomfort and distress so that's just some pre-warning for all of you and this place is also forbidden to uh, to use cameras, but we ask some uh, uh, permission to use the camera. And this is completely made of human hair. After each prisoner is sent here, the first thing that they will have to go through is to have their hair cut. Here in the glass exhibition, you can see uh, tons of hair, human hair. So when the Soviet Red Army liberalized this place, they found uh, 7.7 .7 tons of human hair. You can imagine how many people that will equalize to. That's the uh, exhibition of uh, Building 4. Let's go on to Building 5. The poisonous gas we mentioned, its, it's inventor is called Harbour. He is a German chemist, but he ironically is Jewish, so he himself is also persecuted during the Second World War. Let's move on to building number five. As you can see that all these uh, red bricks building, there are 28 in total in this camp number one, and most of them have been kept intactly. But due to the repairment, and uh, renovation, most of them are not open to the public. So today uh, we have a fair weather. As you can see, many visitors can be found on the camp. 
In, for this Auschwitz camp in year 2017, there were around 2.1 million visitors. Most of them are from Poland, and the next they're from UK, uh, 340,000 from UK, 180,000 from US, and also numerous visitors from Israel and uh, France, and it's my third visit to this uh, camp. As I can see, most of the Asian people visiting this camp are from South Korea. So this is building number five. This is uh, the criminal evidence of uh, Nazi Germany. Inside this building, uh, the belongings of uh, the Jewish people are demonstrated. Let's first move to this room. As uh, you can see here, um, the we have uh, 75 tons of uh, glasses. They are of the same style. And uh, this is uh, the shower tower used, used by the Jewish people. It's called Tidek. OK, let's move on to the next room. Here you can find the toothbrushes, the shoes, and inside this room. This is uh, where the hand sticks are stored. Since we are indoors and we have a numerous, we have a many visitors, so our broadcasting signal may not be so stable. St stable. So. All these have been used by the Jews before they are sent to the synagogues. So room number three. Room number three of uh, building number five is uh, here. It's uh, where the Jews who used to work intensive labor works, uh, what did they enjoy for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner? As you can see, that a bowl of a bowl of uh, porridge and uh, bread are the most they can enjoy. So. Those are the devices they used for meal and uh, some of the personal accessories. Let's move on to the second story. Here, it demonstrated the suitcases. The suitcases uh, that bear the names and the birth, birth dates of uh, the Jews. Many of those uh, Jews uh, naively believed that one day, sometime later on, they could reclaim their suitcases. And 
So let's move on to this side. Here we have a uh, uh, Newman 1939. So I believe this 1939 means that year the owner of this suitcase arrived at this camp. And inside this exhibition box, there are as uh, to the information, as many as uh, 230,000 teenagers and youths have been gathered here at the camp. But what's on record, there is only a minimum number of uh, 20,000. For most of those who are not capable of uh, working as a uh, labor force, they were sent directly to the incinerator upon their arrival at the camp. So for our dear friends, if you yourselves are the parents while seeing these clothes, you can say how young those kids were. So this is a pile of shoes. In addition to this, we have uh, a bigger exhibition window for the shoes. Here, um, as many as uh, 40,000 pairs of shoes are stored here. They are of uh, varying styles. They are female shoes, milk shoes, and uh, kids' shoes. And here, let me highlight that pair of red shoes. It's uh, so prominent in a pile of uh, black and uh, green shoes. Do you remember that Sindler's list? There was an image, a young lady in red windbreaker. She stood amongst a group of people in red, in gray and the black clothes. So I believe that's the inspiration of uh, the director Spielberg. So since we are finishing the tour of this building number five, let's move on to our next stop. So Poland is uh, a country with uh, Catholic as its main religion, but they have a very open-minded attitude to the religious belief. And uh, Poland used to be the second largest country where the Jews concentrate. Here, inside this window, you can see numerous brushes there are brushes for the clothes cleaning and also for the makeup applying. So this is another evidence to review the lie the Nazi Germany were telling to the Jewish people, because the Jewish people were told they will be relocated to this uh, camp. And here, inside this uh, window, there are um, numerous containers of the shoe polish. We've uh, said that before the World War II, and due to the Holocaust of uh, the Nazi Germany, um, Many Jews have uh, left uh, for Israel, and uh, so far in Poland, there are around uh, 10,000 Jews living here, and uh, they used to make up 10% uh, of the population, but now it's uh, 0 0.1 per 400.
So let's take a look in this room first. Over here, this picture. On side is uh, the numbers on the legs. In most cases, the numbers are tattooed on the left leg of uh, the prisoners. They are the only identity of uh, the prisoner here. And uh, each prisoner needs to learn how to pronounce their numbers in German. And so this is their new, that's their new, na new name. And this is also a process of identity loss. And uh, so that the Jews will uh, eventually identify themselves with these numbers. And on this picture, the red triangle sign means a political prisoner. And uh, black triangle means the gypsy people. And the SU uh, means uh, the prisoner, pri the word prisoner. The pink means uh, the gay or a lesbian. So this is the prisoner's clothes worn by the Jews. For those people, you are seen on these pictures. In after year 1942, a new identity system, uh, mechanism has been adopted here at the camp, camp as the prisoners are no longer uh, required to undertake tattoo. And uh, most of the prisoners need to work intensively for 11 hours a day. So that means after a dozen of uh, months, people will die gradually. So this is uh, a kid born on the camp. And also we can say those uh, decimated teenager teenagers. This is a photo of the female. So the notes here read that she weighs only 33 pounds. Uh, she used to weigh 33 pounds. And uh, when taking this picture, she weighed only 22 pounds. And uh, look at this picture. She's uh, so thin that you cannot even detect her legs. And here, um, those uh, pictures also impress how the prisoners lived their daily lives here. And on this one, uh, for those prisoners, they were asked to transport the remains of their patriots. On those photos, we can find a number and uh, their country of birth. These people were lucky because they at least had the opportunity to have their pictures taken. Most of the other people are Polish, and they did not even have the opportunity to have a picture taken. You can see a lot of visitors, and uh, um, the signal in this building is not quite well, for which we apologize.
Most of these people are from Poland. The Jewish people is not qualified to be to have their pictures taken. And they were sent to death before the, the they had the opportunity. The genocide uh, policy was t was adopted after the year 1941, and after 1943, the picture taking policy is also abolished. Therefore, most of the prisoners that came to Auschwitz after that did not have their pictures taken. Now we are on the road to the wall of death. And uh, the soldiers that work, that used to work in these buildings uh, have their insurance. At that time, one of the most famous insurance company called Anlin also worked for Nazi Germany. And uh, that's also when the Coke company um, developed the, a new drink called Finda. And also, their costume was uh, the soldiers' costume were designed by Hugo Boss. And Hugo Boss actually won a big fortune due to their cooperation with Nazi Germany. And some of the body parts of uh, the Jewish were even made into products and their the remaining of their bodies were even used as fertilizers this is one of the most famous places in the concentration camp about that this is called the wall of death about 70,000 Polish people were executed here and each year in Remembrance Day, a lot of uh, Polish people would come here to pay their tribute and send their condolences. On the left of the wall, you can see that's the residence of the prisoners. All of the windows were sealed by wood. All the prisoners, after going through trials and sentences on Building 11, they were taken here and was shot from behind. And on these pillars here, and uh, this is also one form of punishment, as you can see. These are used as gallows. The prisoners were tied up on these pillars, on these gallows, until the final death.
we are experiencing some uh, bad signals here, for which we apologize. This is trial room number 11. It will only take about one minute to sentence a person to death. For example, a child was too uh, too hungry and he stole a piece of bread and then he was sentenced to death immediately. So on the first floor was the uh, s trial room. And the signal might be even worse in this building. In the basement of this building, there are very small rooms. It's completely closed, but uh, almost uh, 30 to 40 people would fit to into one room, and a lot, lot of them that died because of uh, suffocation. In 1941, a person escaped uh, from this uh, prison and uh, the uh, Nazis were very angry, so they sent out 10 people and uh, were executed. But uh, another prisoner volunteered to, uh, to be sentenced to death on behalf or to replace one of the uh, other prisoners. And then he was starved to death. The person that was saved by the volunteer uh, actually survived uh, the concentration camp. And uh, he lived a long life and only passed away in 1994, uh, 1995. Let's go to the only remaining gas room and the uh, uh, incinerator of, uh, of Austin. This is the only remaining gas room of uh, Auschwitz. People might ask, is it possible to escape from the concentration camp? The answer is very few people succeeded in doing that. The number is only 140 people escaped from this camp. The most uh, famous escape happened in 1942. Four people stole the costume of uh, the Nazi soldier and they stole the car and finally successfully escaped the camp. And uh, in 1944, another Polish people escaped this camp with his Jewish girlfriend. Twelve Polish people used to be executed here. because they helped the Jewish people to escape. When talking about uh, Auschwitz, we have to mention the uh, 
designer of the Nazi Germany military costume, about uh, the the deaths of about 400,000 people related to him because he was the one that decide who will be sent to the gas room directly and who will be sent to the labor camp. And uh, he was named uh, the angel of death. The most experiment, famous experiment of him is so-called uh, the optimization of human beings. He proposed to the injection of drugs into human beings in order to realize the so-called optimization. And a lot of people suffered before they were dead due to, uh, before they died, due to a lot of very cruel experiment designed by this person. He also performed a lot of uh, medical experiment, chemical experiment on twins. Considering it a comparatively study, he also conducted autopsies on both the twins in order to compare the result. He once said that human beings are like dogs. And uh, because uh, due to some experiment, you might have an optimized version of uh, dogs, and uh, that will be the same thing with humans. After the World War II, he escaped to South, uh, to, uh, South America. And when he was at the age of uh, 92, uh, of, uh, of uh, 69, he died of heart attack. So uh, he died at the age of uh, 68. You can see the fences, and uh, that's because we have uh, come to the uh, border of the concentration camp. The walking of the prisoners were restricted in between these two fences. On my left hand, you can find this building. And on the second story of this building, the SS would often drink to their heart content. On my right hand side, that's that's also a facility inside the camp. And uh, here, right in front of us, is uh, a gal it's a gallows, where the Rudolf Hus was a uh, hand to death in year 1949. And uh, on my right hand side, you can find uh, a chimney that's arising from the incinerator building. Because for this facility, it used to be a military camp, 
and uh, it was uh, later on renovated into a guest chamber and uh, incinerator because uh, in after year 1943 three massive uh, concentration camps were built in the Brkno so on this side the one of uh, the facility was uh, built into a chimney <coughs> Before the prisoners went into the gas chamber, they were asked to de-dress themselves. And uh, most of the male <coughs> Since the signal is not so stable, we are really so sorry for that. So we are wondering what what had happened today. So this is the entrance to the gas chamber. The roof of this uh, uh, gas chamber has uh, two windows. When the doors were closed, buckets of uh, buckets of uh, the poisonous agents were poured into the chamber. And half an hour later, when the SS opened the door. Almost no one will be found alive inside it. And despite there are some cases when people were scrambling to breathe uh, fresh air, uh, but most of them were suffocated to death because of uh, the gas. And for those dead prisoners, they will they will be put to an autopsy, and uh, after one round of the prisoners have uh, been poisoned to death, they will clean the whole chamber, and uh, uh, the second round will succeed. Will succeed. So for this chamber, it was uh, newly built or renovated after the Soviet Union Red Army has uh, liberated. So. Let's walk inside to take a look. So we are right here. So in light of the signal, we will not uh, stay too long inside. So we are still on the campus of this uh, Auschwitz. I believe this is not a strange name to you, and uh, because uh, I believe you have uh, already browsed or appreciated many documents or documentaries related to this place. So after the tour of those uh, buildings, uh, we are now outdoors on the pavement in the south. And to my understanding, in everything happens he happens in Germany may not be enough for you to get a correct understanding of a person, how brave they are and uh, how righteous they are. It's hard to make a conclusion. And uh, on our journey, there are not only beautiful sceneries, but also what you have achieved alongside and what you have uh, harvested as your personal experience. There are many journeys that may not turn out to be pleasant. <coughs> 